And joining us now, former Fed Vice Chairman Roger Ferguson. He is a CNBC contributor and distinguished fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. And uh, Roger, I'm sure you've uh, kind of heard us kicking this around a little bit. You know, it strikes me, front page of the Wall Street Journal today, say investor hopes are shrinking for Fed to plot a soft landing. That today's number uh, maybe suggests that a soft landing is, is not out of the question here. We do have moderating uh, payrolls growth along with uh, a little more workers coming back in uh, to the labor force as well as wage growth uh, softening a little bit. I would say that today's numbers were sort of straight down the middle, uh, totally consistent with consensus, as the panel said. I wouldn't argue one way or the other in terms of this, either indicating the possibility of a soft landing or not, because I think the challenge for soft landing is to actually get inflation uh, under control. Uh, and inflation is still you know, raining, raging uh, far above the 2 percent. So I look at these numbers as basically consistent with what had been expected. I think uh, the market still priced in a reasonably good chance of a 75 basis point move. Uh, and overall, it was sort of, uh, as your panel said, didn't move the markets one way or the other, which is, I think, right. But I wouldn't read a soft landing into these numbers just yet because there's much more work to be done before we figure out whether or not the Fed gets inflation under control uh, and, and avoids that bumpy land that people are worried about. Yeah, and clearly nothing is going to supersede the inflation numbers themselves in terms of figuring out uh, whether, in fact, the Fed has it under control. And, of course, uh, Chair Powell said a few months ago that this is not a moment for a particularly nuanced rating of inflation. That being said, the market's going to try to look ahead and handicap when uh, perhaps a turn is there. You know, a few months ago, uh, the Fed had us focused on headline CPI, which means gasoline prices and inflation expectations in the consumer surveys, which also means means gasoline prices. Gasoline prices have come down by, what, 20 percent in a couple months. Uh, and here we are talking about core services CPI. So it feels as if the Fed uh, just wants to keep the market anxious, uh, or at least from getting too comfortable with the idea that we can count on this lower glide path for inflation. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, I think the Fed was somewhat frustrated that the market expected them uh, to go up to a terminal rate of, you know, somewhere below 4 percent stay there for a short period of time and then come down pretty quickly. The, the I, Fed speaker has been pushing back hard against this uh, quick reversal. Uh, you heard Chair Powell saying that they may have to uh, stay, you know, higher for some time. So I wouldn't say they want to keep the market on edge. I think they are trying to get the market aligned to the fact that there's a great deal more work to be done before inflation comes uh, convincingly close to that 2 percent target. And the, the market should not expect, you know, a quick hump and then uh, moving back down. Um, I think they're trying to get the market to, to recognize higher terminal rate, stay there for longer, and come back down much more slowly than perhaps the market had earlier priced in. And really, I guess, uh, Roger, the debate has to be in part about what are going to be the inputs to inflation moderating more quickly. In other words, what level of unemployment might have to be required? What's the actual relationship these days between uh, employment and consumer inflation? Because we don't really know. It's not a fixed relationship. And we have all these unique factors coming out of the pandemic. I'm reminded of back in the in the early 90s, people thought inflation couldn't go. I mean, uh, unemployment couldn't go below six or five percent without being too inflationary. So what do you think the Fed is thinking about in terms of what has to happen? Happen to the job market to help them get their job done? I think you're thinking about two or three things, some of which were in today's report, some of which came out earlier. One is the uh, job openings number. So we still have 11.2 uh, uh, million openings, I believe. So roughly two openings for every unemployed person. We've heard Chair Powell talk about that number, that relationship as one that he'd like to get closer to one to one. Don't know if we'll get there, but that's one thing that they're looking at. I think the other that hasn't paid, been given much attention is productivity, which has been declining and is actually negative or has had negative growth. Um, and that uh, is not a good story for inflation. Um, and so I think people uh, will worry, will continue to watch that. Obviously, the inflation number. Uh, today we saw something that would be a slight moderation in average hourly earnings. I think that's all relevant. So there are a range of uh, elements that go into this inflation picture. And we shouldn't get ourselves totally focused on only one when I think the Fed's trying to figure out how to triangulate across four or five different factors, all of which will lead to you know, both the headline inflation and core inflation, both of which they're looking at.
For sure. And, and of course, they've been very emphatic uh, in emphasizing the 2% target, saying that that is really the standard here. Uh, people in the market will say, look, if it gets in the general vicinity of 2%, even if it's above for a little while, that could mean a policy downshift. Do you think that's something uh, that makes sense? I think it might make some sense, uh, but the question is how close to two does one have to get to call it uh, a victory? And I think one of the things Fed is very worried about is maintaining, you know, confidence and credibility. You know, inflation expectations are reasonably well anchored, but at the upper end of something that looks credible from the standpoint of the Fed. And so, you know, they have a credibility challenge of having insisted that it's going to be 2 percent. They haven't hinted at how close to 2 percent is good enough. And so I think markets just have to wait and see and not get themselves, uh, you know, ahead of the Fed. The Fed is controlling the tempo now. They've finally gotten a chance where they're controlling your message, and they don't want to lose that by getting markets sort of out of kilter with their own expectations. Yeah, for sure. And so much has changed in just a couple of years when they try to try to convince us that they would tolerate uh, above 2 percent inflation for a little while uh, when they couldn't get it that high. Roger, thanks very much for your perspective today. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend.